Okay, these are some Regents review questions, um, potential energy diagrams, and rates of reaction. So hopefully you looked over the notes for those. Um, yeah, in a chemical reaction, the difference between the potential energy of the products and the potential energy of the reactants is, so the difference, so I'll just draw over here, here's that. So the difference between the pro reactants and the products. So the difference is in here. And we call that delta H, which is also known as the heat of reaction. So that is choice one. The difference, are, oh, we just did this. The difference is delta H. What is the difference between the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the products? So here's reactants. Here are products. So the reactants looks like 20. And this looks like 40. So the difference, products minus reactants, this is a P by the way, wow. That's not an R. 40 minus 20 is 20. Choice one. <coughs> Hold on a second. I just don't want to see that thing bouncing. Stop bouncing. Okay. Um, which statement describes the characteristics of an endothermic reaction? So you should know that endothermic means heat is taken in. So if heat is taken in, that means we have to start lower and end higher. So let's worry about delta H in a minute. The products have less potential energy than the reactants. No, the products would have to have more than the reactants. So can't be that one, could be that one, can't be that one. Okay, so now delta H is always products minus reactants. So let's just make up numbers. Let's say this is 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 minus 20 is 20, that's a whole number. Positive delta H for any endothermic. So that is two. Okay, any exothermic reaction would have a negative delta H. Given the potential energy diagram with the following, which arrow represents the potential energy of reactants? Reactants is where we start. So here we are. So the question is, is it, is it A or is it B? Well, B is the reactants. What is A, by the way? A is the amount of energy it takes to start to get to the maximum called activation energy, which I'm sure we're going to talk about later in these questions. Given the diagram, which interval represents the difference between the PE of the products and PE of the reactants? Once again, we're looking for delta H. So here's the reactants. Here's the products. The difference between one or this and that is choice four. Okay. Let's go to the next page, which will occur if a catalyst is, add, is added. So again, I think catalysts are in my next group of notes, but that's okay. You should know from other classes like biology that catalysts, something like an enzyme is a catalyst, it's going to speed up the rate of the reaction by lowering the activation energy and providing an alternate reaction pathway. It will not change the, react, the total results. So you won't get something brand new. So the activation energy will be changed. The rate of the forward reaction only will be increased. No, because also the reverse could be increased. The delta H will be decreased. Delta H won't change. So it's going to be choice one. Now, if this is still confusing, we're going to talk about catalysts a little bit more later. Base eight and nine on this below, where is the activation energy of the forward? Remember, this would be the forward left to right. This would be the reverse. So activation energy is where you start to the maximum. So that is going to be choice three C. <coughs> the heat of reaction is the difference between where you start and where you end. So that is going to be B, which is two. According to table I, the dissolving of which of the following is uh, accompanied by the release of energy. I guess we're going to have to go to table I. I don't think I described this in the notes. Whoops. So let's just go there. The dissolving of which salt. All right. Table I is heats of reaction. 
So I'm going to find LIBR. It's the second one from the bottom. So second one from the bottom, it says negative 48.83 kilojoules. And at the bottom of table I, it says a minus sign indicates an exothermic reaction. So that means it's exothermic, which is the release of heat. So that's our answer. Um, let's keep going, though. This one is the fifth one from the bottom. And it is a positive delta H, which means endothermic. NaCl is a positive delta H, which means endothermic. KNO3 um, is a positive delta H, which means endothermic. This is the only one that was negative, meaning exothermic. What is required for a chemical reaction to occur? Standard temperature and pressure, a catalyst, effective collisions, equal number of moles. The only one that is absolutely required is that you have effective collisions. For a reaction to occur, you need effective collisions with sufficient energy and orientation. Number 12, <coughs> as the temperature of a chemical reaction in the gas phase is increased, read the reaction. Okay, so we're increasing temperature. So what's going to happen to gas particles? They're going to move around faster. They're going to collide more. That's our answer. Uh, fewer particle collisions would happen when you would lower the temperature. Um, that doesn't change. As the temperature of a reaction increases, it is expected that reaction, reacting particles collide more often and with greater force. Yeah, because when they're moving around fast, they're going to be, um, obviously they're going to be moving around fast because at higher temperature, they're moving faster. And then also um, they're going to be bouncing off the walls and bouncing off other things um, a lot more. At 20 degrees Celsius, a 1.2 gram sample of magnesium ribbon reacts rapidly with 10 milliliters of one molar HCl. Which change in conditions would have caused to happen more slowly, slow the reaction down? So increased temperature, is that going to slow it down? No. Decreasing the concentration, Ooh, making it less concentrated, that might. Using powdered magnesium. Uh, that would have an increase of surface area, so we, yeah, we should uh, want that. And then ribbon, that's a lot more, that would increase. So the only one that would make it go slower would be that one. A 5-gram sample of zinc and a 50-milliliter sample of hydrochloric acid are used. What would have the fastest reaction rate? So you want more surface area and you want greater concentration. So which would have more surface area, strip or powder? It should be powder because it's got more surface area, and which is more concentrated, the three molar. Okay. Given the balanced equation representing a reaction, blah, 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 this reaction occurs more quickly when powdered iron is used instead of a single piece of iron because the powdered iron has a greater surface area, not catalysts, it's reactions, it's not going to be more metallic, and it's not going to absorb less energy. Um, what is going to be affected by a catalyst? So catalyst is not going to change this, and it's not going to change this, but it is going to change how quickly it gets there. So the only one that it changes is 3. Um, that's not just our answer. Well, it's got to have 3. Is it going to change one? Oh, you know what? It is also going to change one because look, instead of going all the way up there, it's going to go right here. Yeah, so one and three. For a given reaction, adding a catalyst provides an alternate reaction pathway, a different path, and this was our activation energy, and now it's just like this. So it's a lower activation energy. Choice two. And which will occur at the fastest rate? Um, so <coughs> solid oxygen, CO2, I mean, we've got solid, that's going to take a while. Aqueous, aqueous, okay, that, that might. Liquid, liquid, solid. Hmm, this has to do with entropy. And the fastest rate is going to have the most entropy to start, so that would have to be the aqueous. Aqueous is even more than that. Finally, activation energy for the reverse, so we're going to read it that way. So starts here, got to go here. That is, let's see, C plus B2. Okay, uh, 
reach out with any questions. Thanks.